It's my pleasure to be joined by Scott Kelly to talk about his brand new book, Endurance. We're going to get to this specifically in a little bit. I feel like the first question I have to ask sure. a man who's been in space as frequently as you have and for as long as you have, what's it like being on Earth? Earth's great. <laughs> I love Earth. I saw an interview you did with uh, Stephen Colbert yeah. when he asked you the question that I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. which was, I, considering everything that's going on in the world, do you sometimes wish that you were back Every up? day. You, really? <laughs> Is that, oh, that's a serious answer. Yeah. I mean, fact, I mean to be honest, if I could escape it and go yeah. up and see everything. Well, you know, it's an incredible privilege to fly in space, and I miss a lot of stuff about it. Also, you know, clearly I like Earth. Earth's got a lot of good stuff on it. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of issues, but, uh, yeah. you know, I think they're not, they're issues that are not unsolvable um, if we put our minds to it. Amazing. Well, again, in Endurance, the mm -hmm. new book, um, you talk, uh, it's not just about your time in space, it's also talks a lot about your life and mm -hmm. what brought you to the kind of becoming an astronaut, yeah. because you've got an amazing story even before then. Mm -hmm. um, your brother, Mark Kelly, is also an astronaut. Um, and I feel like that's super rare to have two brothers who are both spent yeah. time in space. Mm -hmm. What do you think it was about your upbringing which ultimately led to both you and Mark being astronauts? You know, I, I don't really know if it was upbringing. I, I, I definitely, you know, can say, you know, our parents didn't, not only did they give us a very long leash, they actually like cut the leash by <laughs> around the time we were like 10 years old. We were kind of out on our own. I don't know if that makes you, you know, grow up differently or makes you more responsible in some ways, maybe more irresponsible than others. But, uh, you know, looking back at my childhood and the stuff my brother and I, the kind of risk-taking things we got into and the uh, ability to deal with, uh, you know, stressful situations, you know, perhaps that was, was helpful. Or, you know, of course, it might just be happenstance or genetics, who knows? Yeah, we're gonna get onto the stress of being in space mm -hmm. soon, but something else you pointed on in the book, which I found extremely interesting is that, I feel like a lot of people think that to become an astronaut, you have to be a straight A student your whole mm -hmm. life, but you kind of struggled at school quite yeah. a lot. And maybe you've got some words for our listeners and our viewers mm -hmm. who maybe have ambitions of being an astronaut, but kind of are struggling a bit in school. Yeah, so I'm kind of not the normal uh, person, at least the, the way people think about the folks that become astronauts, you know, I think the, 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 you know, the notion of it is that you're the best student, you're, you know, you do great at everything your whole life, and you decide, hey, I'm going to do this because I saw the Apollo program, and I'm going to fly in space someday, and you never make another mistake, you just live this perfect life from then on. I, that was not me. And, uh, you know, I was this kid who couldn't pay attention, couldn't do his homework, uh, struggled throughout school, went to college, struggled there. One day I walk into the bookstore, not to buy a book, to buy like gum or something. And I saw this book on the shelf. It had a red, white, and blue cover, really cool title, made me pick it up, looked at it, bought it, went back and read it. And it was The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe. And the way, you know, Tom described these characters, actually real people, you know, I recognized, I felt like I had a lot in common with them, with one exception, as I couldn't pay attention, could not study, could not do my homework. And I thought, you know, if I could fix that one thing, maybe I could be like them someday. Fast forward 18 years later, you know, I was 18 when I read that book. 18 years later, I was flying in space for the first time. And, you know, I hope that message is also, you know, it's part of my book as well, is that, um, you know, I hope people can get some inspiration from this and think that, hey, maybe I can do more than I thought was possible. On actually, I think the page before you spoke about the right stuff on the page after in your book, there's a quote about your time as a U.S. Navy captain, mm -hmm. which I wanted to read back to you. Um, you never knew what you would face next, gunshot wounds, heart attacks, broken bones. Retrospectively, do you feel like that career of yours helped prepare you to be an astronaut? Well, I think, uh, you know, at a, at a very young age, I think I started in like the ninth or 10th grade getting involved in uh, uh, emergency medicine as an EMT, volunteer with an ambulance and taking care of people that were sick, injured, uh, you know, 
car accidents, trauma, gunshot wounds, stabbings. I lived outside of New York City, so we had a lot of opportunity there to deal with some, you know, pretty uh, tense situations. And I think that did help prepare me to deal with stress and a stressful environment. My parents actually didn't get along very well our whole lives growing up, and I think dealing with them and, and their conflict um, made an impression on my brother as people that can, you know, kind of, you know, navigate um, stressful situations very well. Now, the first time you went to space, if I'm right, was 1999 mm -hmm. as a pilot of the STS-103 Discovery mm -hmm. working in the Hubble Space Telescope, which is obviously very well known. Mm -hmm. um, what was your, do you remember that first reaction when you first left Earth? And what was that reaction? Um, well, when the solid rocket motors light, my reaction was something that I can't say right now. Okay. <laughs> Probably. You have something equivalent to the FCC here. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank so I don't you wanna, very much. I don't want to yeah. upset them. Okay. But it, it started with the word holy. Okay. And then there was something after. Was it with a positive intent? It was with um, mostly with shock. Okay. I was shocked by the amount of energy that the two solid rocket motors and those three main engines provide and how that seven million pounds of thrust, I could feel it in my spine instantly. And it was just one of these holy yeah. moments. Our listeners can insert those words. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of your most famous kind of expeditions, if you want to mm -hmm. call it that, um, was your one in 2015, yeah. which is all about the toll that being in space has on your body. Um, do you think that going up to space four times, does it get easier on your body each time? Do you get more used to it? Yeah, you do. I mean, the longer, the more times you fly, the longer you spend, spend in space, the more comfortable you get because it's not a... Uh, it's not an easy place to live and work. Uh, it takes a while to learn, you know, how to move around, how to, you know, even, you know, for your digestive system to work. And it seems like the more time you spend up there, you have, you know, also you have a little bit of like memory. Your body has a little bit of memory to it. Like, you know, the second, third, fourth time you're thinking, oh, yeah, my, my, my physiology remembers being here. So, yeah, it's definitely a place that, uh, yeah, I think the more you visit, the more used to you uh, get to living in that environment. In that 2015 expedition, and you spent about 11 months in space, mm -hmm. which I believe I looked is either the third or fourth longest time anyone in the world yeah. has spent up there. Yeah, counting the Russian guys. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what is your standout feeling from spending so long in space now that you've been back for a little while? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, what like the main thing I I learned myself uh, from this year in space, and also from just being associated with NASA, is that this space station that we built is uh, a million pounds and the size of a football pitch. I think you guys call it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Football pitch, really <laughs> big, um, and we built this structure in space. Well flying around the Earth at 25 times the speed of sound in extremes of temperatures of plus or minus 270 degrees. Um, we built it at, with this international partnership of 15 countries, different languages, different cultures. This space station, it's the hardest thing we've ever done. Harder than going to the moon. Absolutely convinced. And I was inspired that if we can do this, the hardest thing, we can do all this other stuff that isn't as hard, but challenging. You know, we got a lot of challenges on Earth, and if we put our minds to it, if we get a great group of people, if we work together as a team, we can do some pretty miraculous stuff. That's very inspirational. My next question is far from it. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned in the book that in preparation for that expedition, the Russians cover their food with dill mm -hmm. because it gets rid of its unwanted gas. Mm -hmm. um, what, from all your time in space, what are your number one? What's your number one tip? for somebody else going into space? Just like a little thing that they might not be thinking about but might help. Oh, if you were to, if you, like you today were yeah. to launch into space, what tip yeah. would I give you? I would say whatever force you think it would take you to move from, from there to there, divide by a thousand. Okay. It is so much less. Okay. Because at first, you know, people get up there and they're flying around in this like, 
horizontal orientation like Superman or knocking stuff off the walls. It's just like chaos. Yeah. And the more time you get up there, especially after months, you're just like very small. Like to move myself from here to there, I would just kind of go like this. Okay. So Without it's that really, much force. Yeah. So it's quite almost like delicate, almost being up there. It's like ballet. Ballet. Well, it's, and I'm not yeah. clearly not a ballerina. <laughs> well, I don't know, Scott. You've been up to space so many times; you could do anything, couldn't you? Um, now you're back on Earth. Then, uh, what do you miss most about being up there? Uh, the people I was there with, great people from all around the world, friends. That even though they're all on Earth now, I don't get to see them very much. And the work. I mean, the work is technically challenging. It has serious consequences if you you know, don't do something correctly. Um, and that's the two things I miss the most. You know, the Earth's incredible view, floating is fun, but really I miss those two things more than anything. I've got two final questions for okay. you. Uh, firstly, looking to the next year, 2018, what does kind of innovation on Earth mean to you? What are you most looking forward to? You know, I think we're on the cusp of some pretty miraculous changes in this world, you know, whether it's, you know, self-driving vehicles, uh, maybe self-driving flying airplanes, uh, artificial intelligence. You know, I think probably every, um, every generation or, you know, societies generally think, you know, we, we got it pretty good with, you know, our technology. But I do believe that we're at kind of a, a turning point here. And, um, and I'm excited to, to be able to witness it and be, hopefully be a part of it. Brilliant. My final question then. You're a national treasure. You've oh, been I on... wouldn't go that far. <laughs> You've been on the cover of Time magazine. You're named as one of the 100 most influential people by Time in 2015. What would you say your biggest achievement, though, in your life has been? Huh. My biggest achievement? Well, you always have to, you know give the shout out to your kids you know i, I was just hoping you would say that for your own two sake yeah. <laughs> great kids and i hope that they will achieve more than me um you know and i hope uh you know their lives they will be able to uh, help other people help to solve the challenges that we have we have many especially in the u.s right now and uh you know be great uh, contributors to our society brilliant scott kelly thank you so much oh my pleasure thank awesome you.